low-flying helicopter ride presents the breathtaking beauty of the Mekong River Delta. The source of the Mekong is high up in the Tibetan Himalayas, and as the river flows into the South China Sea, its massive delta of waterways and canals make for some of the most fertile farmland in the world, and South Vietnam's most densely populated region. Yet to an American serving here in 1967, Vietnam will always be a land of great contrasts. For throughout these mangrove forests, coconut groves, rice paddies, and villages, the Viet Cong enemy thrived. And it was the job of the sailors assigned to the U.S. Navy's Mobile Riverine Forces to sort out the good from the bad. stationed just offshore served as home base for the crews of the Huey UH-1B helicopters nicknamed Seawolf. These gunships were one of the critical elements of the Navy's forces here. SEAL teams working together with the Army's 9th Infantry Division. And mobile, the Riverine Force was. As it could travel 150 miles in 24 hours and be ready for combat within 30 minutes of anchoring. Each day the Sea Wolf helicopters and PBRs would leave the pond on a 16-hour patrol to search out and destroy the Viet Cong guerrillas, who considered the Mekong Delta their territory as well. Perfect coordination between the Sea Wolves and PBRs was imperative for successful operations and the minimization of casualties. Water seemed to be everywhere in the Mekong Delta during the monsoon season. With few formal roads, canals were the main avenues of transportation for the Viet Cong, and so all crucial Navy warfare tactics featured boats and helicopters in one way or another. The barrack ship also provided a mobile docking facility for numerous PBRs. Operations on the murky and shallow waters of the Mekong Delta required the PBR to be a very specialized craft. Only 32 feet long and drawing less than one foot of water, a PBR was propelled by a pump jet as normal propellers would not have been able to survive the Delta's weed-choked waters. The PBRs were designed to be highly maneuverable and were capable of a top speed of 20 knots. A compact but sophisticated radar system searched for Viet Cong activity around them. A PBR was heavily armed for such a small boat, carrying twin 50 caliber machine guns facing forward and a 30 caliber gun facing aft. Throughout the Delta and in the infamous Rungsad Swamp Marsh, the PDR saw a considerable amount of action between the long stretches of tense boredom that occurred during the typical patrol. Viet Cong and who was loyal to the South Vietnamese government. 
each and every sandpan will search for any evidence of Viet Cong collaboration. But without uncovering hidden weapons, it was next to impossible to identify a Viet Cong gorilla. Sometimes they were uncovered too late, as many Viet Cong sandpans were booby trapped. A noteworthy statistic from this war is that more than 10% of U.S. casualties were from crude, homemade booby traps. One of the many tragedies of the Vietnam conflict was the victimization of the peaceful villagers who received nothing but misery and death. While desiring only to go about their daily tasks, they were subject to constant search by the Navy and, it is reported, under continuous threat from the Viet Cong to cooperate with them. The Delta villagers were caught in the middle of this war and were treated with suspicion, fear, and intimidation from each side. search during the routine patrol. The PBRs cruised tirelessly back and forth, up and down every river and canal. Most searches revealed nothing meaningful, yet it seemed somehow that the Viet Cong always found a way